Welcome. My name is Maria Blaquier, and I'm here to share my knowledge on draconic astrology. I want to thank Nadia for giving me this opportunity to share my content with her listeners. Thank you so, so much for your generosity. Okay, let's talk about draconic astrology. Whenever I say, for instance, my moon is in Sag or my Mercury is in Scorpio, I'm using the tropical zodiac. And generally, it's very common to assume that everybody uses that zodiac and it's the only zodiac that exists. But if I were using this ideal zodiac, for instance, I wouldn't say that my moon is in Sag. I would say that it's in Scorpio. And the same with my Mercury. It would be in Libra instead of in Scorpio. So the kind of zodiac that you use is very, very important. And it's also important to bear in mind that there are different kinds of zodiacs. And this has to do with the starting point that one uses. And every kind of zodiac is going to yield a different interpretation. Okay, so when we're using the draconic zodiac, what we're doing is we're using the north node of the moon as the starting point. So what are the nodes? Okay, the moon orbits around the earth. If we project that, moon, that orbit into space, we can see how this orbit is tilted towards the ecliptic. And that means that they're going to intersect. So when the moon goes from north of the ecliptic to south of the ecliptic, that point is the south lunar node. And when it goes from south to north, that point is the north lunar node. And this is where eclipses take place because when the moon is conjunct the ecliptic, it, all, it has the same latitude as the sun. So if the moon and the sun are conjunct or opposite in longitude, but they're all also in the same degree in latitude, that is near the nodes, that's where we're going to have the eclipses. Okay, so the starting point of the draconic zodiac is going to be the north lunar node. Now, my north lunar node is in Aries. Yours is probably in another sign. So what this means is that for each of us, the starting point of the draconic zodiac is going to be different. Wherever we have the north node in our charts is going to become zero degrees of Aries or the starting point for the draconic zodiac. Also, what this means is that the draconic zodiac is dependent on the tropical zodiac. We cannot look at a draconic chart separately from a tropical chart. They always go together. So, all the planets have nodes, but when we're talking about the lunar nodes, of course, we're referring to matters concerning the moon, things that have to do with our emotions, our past, our, our heritage, okay? So this is important to bear in mind because the draconic zodiac, it, it isn't unconscious, but it's not out there. It's not in your face. It's not linked to psychological behaviors. It's a sort of zodiac that is behind the scenes. It's very powerful, but it's not obvious. We are aware of it, most of the time at least. But it has this lunar, this lunar trait to it, okay? It's not so obvious. The North Lunar Node is also called Caput Draconis which is the Latin term for head of the dragon. And the south lunar node is called cauda draconis, which is the Latin name for tail of the dragon. And the reason for this is that in ancient times, it was believed that whenever there was an eclipse, what was going on is was that a dragon was eating either the sun or the moon, okay? So because the eclipses take place very near the nodes, the notes were linked to the dragons. And in traditional astrology, the way that the notes were treated was the North Node was linked to Venus and Jupiter, and it was said to be 
a benefic influence. It made things grow. It may made things better. And the south node, on the other hand, was linked to Mars and Saturn and was thought to have a malefic influence. And I do horary, so I still use this interpretation. But when we talk about draconic astrology, what we generally use is the way, the modern psychological way of looking at the nodes. And this was developed in the last century by many astrologers, but Dane Rudyard played a key role in the modern psychological interpretation of the nodes. And what he said was that the North Node had to do with the head or the mouth of an animal. So it was, it, it referred to traits and behaviors that needed to be incorporated into our life. And the South Node was linked to the organs of evacuation, to the tail of the dragon. So it referred to things that we already were familiar with and we were prepared to let go, to get rid of, because the South Node refers to unconscious motivations or unconscious behaviors that we're already very familiar with. And we can express even in spite of ourselves, but they won't lead us to growing, to evolution. The South, the North Node, on the other hand, requires a conscious effort. And therefore, it will, it will lead us to growing, to evolution, to becoming better people, better persons, or better individuals. So what he wrote, what Dane Rudyard wrote was, the South Node shows where we are coming from, the path of least resistance. It describes qualities that we're already familiar with and express in spite of ourselves. Let's have a look at some examples of this. For instance, Barack Obama was the first candidate to the presidency who used social media to his advantage. He became wi very widely known because of his wonderful, excellent use of social media. And social media, of course, is Aquarius. So he has the North, the South Node, the past of least resistance, where we are coming from, what comes naturally to us in Aquarius. Let's have a look at the way that he managed his social media compared to the candidate of the opposition. So he had 30 million, almost 31 million followers in Facebook compared to the candidate of the opposition who had less than 9 million, okay? He had 21 million followers in Twitter compared to 1.3 million from Romney. 32 million fans in Google. This is incredible, okay? More than 30 times more fans in Google than his competition. Okay, look at the 10 more times viewers in YouTube compared to Romney. This is really amazing. Of course, this is a man who had a very, who could relate to social media and to technology very, very easily. And that helped him go to his North Node, which is in Leo. So for him, his path of evolution had to do with becoming the king, becoming a president, being important, being the, well, he became the most important person or the most powerful person in the world for, for, for some years, okay? So that is very descriptive of using the South Node, the qualities of the South Node, in order to become or develop the qualities of the North Node. Let's have a look at another example. Okay, so Scarlett Johansson is someone who at first, at the first impact that I always have with her is, this woman is really sexy. 
you can see a lot of Scorpio in her chart. And of course, she does have the moon in Scorpio. But the fact that the south node is in Scorpio as well makes that moon much, much stronger. And it gives her this magnetism, this sexual Con the sexual impact that she, she generates in others. And the North Node, where she needs to go, is about looking after her body, getting real, getting things down, down to earth. And, okay, a relating how she relates to money. And I think that she's been wonderful at achieving that, the kind of behavior that the North Node requires of her. Okay, I hope this was helpful. And please stay tuned because I will be talking about how to look at a draconic chart in the next video. Thank you very much for being here.